Growing up in Liverpool was a magical time. You know, my mum and dad worked hard in little. But they strived to make me happy. Your know, life was tough, but oh, God, I was loved. I was blessed to have them as my parents. All the children in the community weren't as lucky as I was. Their parents would go out for the day, probably to the pub, and they'd leave them with just a loaf of bread and a glass of water. The way that the community came together to help those children was extraordinary. Or so we thought. And my mum was on the committee. She was like a saint. Everyone went to her for advice. I think that the children that didn't have mothers saw her as well. And I suppose in some sort of way, they saw him as a father. He always creeped me out. He's always getting right up in your face. And that smile. I still picture it to this day. And the committee used to organise these trips. And when we'd go, I'd always stay really close to my mum. It was like I was attached to her hip. She asked me one day if I wanted to go on one of these trips with him and the other children. And I asked her if she was going and she said no, and I said that I didn't want to go without her. But she said that, you know, he would look after me. And on the morning of the trip, I pretended to be sick, so I didn't have to go. It's only now that I realise how lucky I was that I pretended to be sick that day. I wonder if my mother wasn't on the committee, would I have been one of his victims? We should have known. I mean, the type of people he was associated with. But back then, that didn't matter. I mean, I'm not surprised that he got away with it. You know, if one went down, then just expose all of them. It was just brushed aside because what people didn't know was that these disgusting men knew that these powerful governmental ministers were also involved. And everyone was panicking, so it now seems. Like rats leaving a sinking ship. You know, as I sit here today, talking about these people, I wonder about all the innocent stories that have gone untold. What about the ones that have taken their own lives? You know, the families that have suffered at the hands of these creatures. Like I said, growing up was a magical time. But it was later on down the line that things started to fall apart. You're not for me. For all those children that suffered all those years ago. Jones. Yeah. No, 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 no. Listen, my name's Jimmy Pierce. No, no, I'm not a policeman. No. No, I'm not a detective. I'm a journalist. Yeah. Listen. I was wondering if we could, um, we could have a talk. Yeah, it's about the past. Yeah. But no, listen to me, I'm on. I'm here to help you. I just want to get a few things out of the open car if, if we can. 
You know, I promise you, nothing's gonna be, nothing's gonna come out. It's just between us. Yeah. Okay, you don't mind that now. Okay. Yeah, it's, as I said, it's Jimmy Pierce. Yeah. And yes, I'm a journalist. And as I said, I'm not a policeman. Yeah. Well, I'm actually by a red telephone box now. Today, yeah, that, that, you know, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay, Carl. Well, listen, Carl, listen, thanks for your time, and I look forward to seeing you soon, yeah? Okay. Yeah, I've got a black jacket on. Yeah, glasses, and I've got a shirt, like a, like a striped shirt, yeah? Okay, I'll see you soon. Okay, thanks, Carl. Thank you. Okay, bye, 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 bye. It was the mid 80s. Um, I've been in the home for a few months. Everyone seemed nice, caring. You know, it didn't feel like we were their job and they were taking care of us just to get paid. For a while, we felt like we were a family. Never knew what that felt like. I hardly ever seen my mother when she was caring for me. My father left before I was born. So my mother always blamed me for him walking out. But when I was in that home, I felt like I belonged there. And then one night, one of the workers, Ian, came into my bedroom. I thought he was going to turn off the light. I was always afraid of the dark. He got into my bed. Said he wanted to cuddle. Tried to kiss me. I said no. He said it was just a dream, it would all be over soon. He started touching me. I could feel him touching me. I knew what he was doing. I could feel his breath on my neck getting heavier and heavier. And then when he was finished, he just said, sweet dreams. Then he left. Carly, did you ever speak about this to anyone? He said, if I told anyone, no one would believe me. He said he had high friends in high places who would get rid of me if I told anyone. And did he... Did he ever mention his friend there, Cora? No, but... I think it must be the same group of people involved in this. Do you think these... People could be involved with Lola White. I, I don't know. I do hope they find that little girl. Yeah, me too. Listen, I'm so sorry to put you through this today, but I can't thank you enough. And listen, you've got my number. 
If there's anything you know that I can do, please contact me. Okay. Carla, thank you. From the interviews that I have conducted, it seems this ring of higher class paedophiles could be connected with the disappearance of Lola White. Up to now I have found two cases, one a high profile politician and the other a senior social worker who have sexually abused these children. Some of the cases go back nearly 40 years. I don't know who was at the head of this but I intend to find out. It seems the victims of these crimes have been broken and I can't imagine what it's like to have been called a liar for nearly 30 years. For some reason, I can't help but feel this is one messed up and corrupt world we live in. But I'm determined to get to the bottom of this sinister circle.